17 starts out with part A, find this integral. Now, you'll notice, and most people were okay with this uh, from the outset, that there's M's instead of X's. Most people were okay with this with one little issue, and I'll show you what that is in a second. I'm integrating with respect to M. So 3M squared, I'm going to increase the index to three, and then I'm going to divide by that new index. So 3M cubed over three, and then you have your result which we'll simplify in a second. I'll do the same thing with this 8m, so I'm going to increase that index by one and then divide by that new index. And then this next part here is a plus one. Now, a lot of you instinctively, because you're so used to integrating with respect to x, you wrote down plus x, because a plus one usually turns into a plus x. However, we're integrating with respect to m, that's the variable that we're interested in. So it should be plus m, and then lastly, we have a constant of integration. So we can tidy this up just a teeny bit by cancelling, there's an m cubed, there's a 4m squared, and then the terms that you saw before. Now, when we're determining this particular integral, um, like we saw before with our negative indices and our fractions, this particular integral is not written, so it's set up to make integration easy. You have to manipulate it a little bit and then go for the rules that you know how to use. So I'm going to write this completely in index form without any square root signs in it. This 4y cubed, which the square root is being taken of it, the equivalent of writing that square root sign is the power or the index of a half. So if I use my index laws now, having that 4y cubed on the inside, and then all of that is raised to the power of a half, I can write that as, number one, four to the power of a half. Well, what's four to the power of a half? That's the square root of four. That's why we introduced this index of a half in the first place. So four to the power of a half is just two. It's the square root of four y cubed to the power of a half is y to the power of three multiplied by a half. That's one of the index laws, which we learned all the way back in uh, years, you know, eight and nine really. So that's going to be y to the power of three on two, integrating with respect to y. So from here, you just need to be cautious in your application of the regular standard rule that you use for integrating this. Um, for starters, that two is just gonna hang out the front. And then with the y, I am going to increase its index and then divide by that new index. That looks messy, we're gonna simplify it in a second, but before I do, don't forget, it's an indefinite integral, so it has a constant of integration. All right, fractions on fractions, that looks disgusting. How do we fix it? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator both by two. Um, on the numerator, it just gives you four y to the power of five on two, divided by, now because I'm multiplying by two, it cancels the on two that's in the denominator. So you just get five and then plus C. So there's the answer. Um, if you want it, and often it is helpful, you can write this answer in the form that the uh, question was provided to you. So there was none of this, um, you know, on two like fractional indices in the question that was posed to us. So if I wanted to restore this to looking like a square root, I would say um, that this could be written as uh, four fifths, and it's the square root of y to the power of five plus c. Um, or you could even write that as, that's also equivalent to four over five, um, the square root of y to the five, if I take out a factor of y to the power of four, you get y squared, square root of y plus c. Okay, let's have a look at part c now. Find a primitive function for dy and dx equals six to the power of two x. Now, a lot of people got twisted in turns here because of number one, the base is not e, so it's obviously more difficult to deal with. Uh, and also you've got that two x in the power, which means you've got to use reverse chain rule as well. So this can be a bit of a mess. Now, what I'm gonna suggest is the easiest way to have a think about this is to rewrite this six to the power of two x. Let's rewrite this derivative using our index laws. Six to the power of two x is the same as six squared to the power of x. This is 36 to the power of x. Now, even though these are equivalent, I actually would contend that this is easier to work with because you don't have to think too much about inside derivatives, outside derivatives. Remembering that if you were differentiating something like say five to the power of x, 
E to the X is the one that differentiates into itself. Every other base, like three or four or five or a hundred, it differentiates into five to the X log five. In other words, you multiply by log of whatever base you happen to be starting with. Now, since that's the way differentiation works, to integrate, I'm going to divide by log of whatever the base happens to be. So therefore, um, the primitive function y is going to be the integral of 36 to the x with respect to x. It becomes 36 to the x, but instead of multiplying by log 36, I'm going to divide by log 36 plus my constant. Since they've said find a primitive function, then I'm gonna say a primitive um, is, I'm just gonna choose C equals zero. So that's 36 to the X on log 36. Now, this is how to do it if you don't want to have to worry and fuss about with how the chain rule works. But I will show you how the chain rule works. I should say the reverse chain rule. Uh, and you can see, I'll show you the comparison that you do end up getting the same solution. So let's go straight from here. If I were saying y is the integral of six to the two x dx. Okay, so in this case here, what I need to do is I need to say, okay, I'm going to uh, divide by uh, the log of the base, but I'm also gonna have to divide by uh, the inside derivative. Hmm, that's a lot to take in. So firstly, you just get that six to the two x. You can see just like before, this 36 to the x and the 36 to the x on the next line, that doesn't go anywhere. But then what you divide by is, number one, log of that base, which in this case is six. And number two, you divide by the inside derivative. The inside function is two x, the inside derivative is two. And then you of course, add your constant. Now, let me show you how this is the same as what we got before. Um, six to the power of two x, well that's the same six squared to the power of x that we saw in our very first line of working. And then lastly, two log six is actually equivalent to, using our log laws, log of six squared. And then we have our constant. And hopefully you can see in both cases, um, you've got this six squared uh, to the power of x, which gives you this, and then you've got this log of six squared, which is the same as this log of 36. So whichever way you went, you got the same answer, but you might've found it easier if you didn't have to worry about reverse chain rule, because a lot of people just frankly forgot when they were doing this question. All right, part D. Now you get this integral here and it looks like a terrible mess, but if we simplify it a little bit before we start integrating again, it'll be quite manageable. So let's have a go. This integral, what I need to do with it is to divide everything on the numerator by the denominator. And then I get three separate terms, I integrate them one at a time. So three x to the six divided by x to the four, that will just leave me with three x squared. Uh, minus x to the five, so there's the minus, x to the five divided by x to the four leaves me with just a single x. And then lastly, this two x cubed divided by x to the four, there are more x's on the denominator than the numerator, so that leaves me with two x to the negative one dx. Now, I reflexively wrote this in index form because usually that's the way the integration works easier for us, but actually, that last term there, the two x to the negative one, you might recognize it more easily if you saw it as two over x. What's the integral of two over x? Well, when we get there, it's going to be two of log x. You can see that the one over x, if I just factor out that two, that becomes log x, and now I've just got double of them. Um, it is worth noting, I should move this guy over, because not just x, it's the absolute value of x. And um, if you'd like, I'll, um, I'll link to a uh, explanation of why it's the absolute va value of x. You can see that result on your reference sheet, but you might wonder why it is. So uh, I can explain that in another place. It takes a bit of time. Let's have a go at the rest of the uh, parts of the integrand here being integrated. 3x squared, it integrates into x cubed. Um, that minus x becomes minus x squared on two because I've increased the index, divided by that index. And lastly, I have a constant of integration since it was an indefinite integral.